Welcome to Christian Life's Sunday Sermon. Every Sunday, Pastor Norman will conduct our Sunday Sermon. Each week, the topic will differ, and we hope and pray that you will join us. So let's listen together. Hello, this is Pastor Norman, and as I was preparing the sermon, I was actually looking in the mirror, and I was having a really good stare at my face, and wondering to myself, what do I really see when I look in the mirror? Well, I can see the the bags under my eyes, and a, a few wrinkles appearing, and my hair is not as thick as it used to be. My eyes are still quite clear and I thought yeah not doing too bad for my age and then I looked a bit deeper and I thought I'm starting to look like my dad and I thought when I look what really do I see or what do other people see when they see me do they see what's on the surface like I see when I look or do they see a person who is happy kind loving caring or somebody who's angry, mad, sad, or fed up. So I'm going to ask you this question. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? But ask yourself another question. What do you hope other people see when they look at you? Or what would you like them to see? I was reading through Genesis in the first chapter in verses 26 and 27. And just before that, earlier on, when God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And then in verse 27, it goes on and says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So in one sense, if we're made in the image of God, when we look in the mirror, should we not see a reflection of the traits or the attributes of God? And as you carry on then on verse 28, it says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seeds in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast on the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And then there was evening, and then there was morning on the sixth day. So everything he made wasn't just good, it was very good. So again, when we look in the mirror, what do we see? Do you see the face that has dominion over everything? A face or an image that God did not say was good, but he said was very good. Now, my daughter, she is 32 years of age, and she has a daughter of her own called Alicia, and Alicia is eight years old. And I remember my daughter very well when she was six, seven, eight, nine years of age. And Alicia, who is eight, when she comes around and spends time with us, it's like having my daughter back when she was of that similar age. A lot of the traits and attributes and behaviours of my granddaughter are very much the same as my daughters were when she was the same age. And they are all lovable. They really are. But to know my granddaughter or to know my daughter, it's like, in a sense, knowing the same person, but in a slightly different era and a slightly different age. 
So just hold on to that thought for a moment. I'm going to move over to John 14. And it says there, I, it's, this, it's about the way, I am the way, the truth and the life. And it says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And now, and from now on, you do know him and have seen him. So basically, to see Jesus is to know God. To know Jesus is to know the Father. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, else believe on account of the works themselves. So to know Jesus is to know the Father. To know my granddaughter in part is to know my daughter. To know me is to know my my personal father. Not 100% because we do have slight differences, but there is that bit of us in our parents. And in verse 12, Jesus goes on to say, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. So as I already said, to know my granddaughter is to know my daughter and vice versa. To know and to see me, you will see some of my father's traits. There are a lot of similar characteristics. But now when I look in the mirror, how many godly or Christ-like characteristics or traits do I see? How many do you see? As we mature in the faith, we should become more Christ-like. And I've heard it say that some, pe some people mature like a fine wine. And I always say it's unfortunate, but some people actually mature like milk. So which are you? Are you a fine wine? Are you milk? Or are you Christ-like? Every time I look in the mirror, I now ask myself that question. What am I reflecting? What am I showing? So I think for us, the first stage is to, refre to reflect Christ, reflect God. Remember, God said, we are very good. And he has handed his creation over to us. And in Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, we have the Great Commission. And starting at verse 16, it says, And now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So step two, teach them to observe all I have commanded. This, I feel, should include the fruits of the Spirit. 
And we can find that in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, where it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So, I'm going to go through them. And the first one we look at was love. So, do you love some and not others? Who did Jesus love? Well, Jesus loved everyone. No matter who they are, what they did, what their backgrounds were, or what they're doing right now. He loved them all unconditionally. He loves me and he loves you. The next one was joy. Are you joyous or are you miserable? And I can understand people face different trials and tribulations in life. But don't let that rob you of your joy. For the fruit of the Spirit is joy. There's also peace. So do you have peace or do you live in turmoil? Do people feel peaceful around you or are they agitated? And again, this goes to the, are you maturing like a fine wine or are you maturing like milk? Are you a calm person? Do people come to you for calmness? Or do you find that people don't want to be around you because you're kind of a prickly person maybe? And that could be because you don't have the peace of the Lord within you. The next one is kindness. So who are you kind to? Is it just a few people you're kind to? Is it just your close family? What about the people in the streets? Or those who have very little or nothing at all? How kind are you to them? And how are you demonstrating your kindness? And then there's goodness. Are you good? Or are you like me, just trying your best every day, trying your best to be good? And faithfulness, how faithful are you to the word of God? How much time do you spend getting to know the Lord? Read the Bible, read his word, talk to others about, about him. Gentleness, are you gentle or aggressive? Are you easy to anger? Or do you have the patience of a saint? And then there's self-control. Something that you, only you, have control over. And many of us will know what we should not be doing. So decide what in your life should you not be doing. And build up that self-control to stop doing it, whatever it may be. You may know some people who are like this and probably nice people to hang around with. And some are opposite. And these are the sort of people you hope that you just don't bump into them. Now, I'm a sort of person who will never judge anybody. I never sit there in, in judgment because we've all had problems, issues, one thing going on. But I do measure people in how long am, am I happy to be stuck in a lift with that person. Now, there are some people out there who I love dearly, but I pray that if I'm in a lift with them, that the lift never fails. Or maybe even get out a few, few floors early so I can walk up the steps. And there's some I'd be happy to be stuck in a lift with for oh, 30 minutes or more. And there's some, if I was in there for a few hours, no problem at all. They're good company. So do you have people like that? You think, oh Lord, please don't let this lift be stuck with them in it. Or if the lift got stuck, I'm quite happy to be there. And what do people say about you? Are they somebody that they're happy to be in a lift with for 20 minutes or more? Or two minutes at the most? We need to display these fruits. And I'm sure there are people out there who have attracted us to Christ. And I remember when I first came to the Lord, one of the guys I met, he had something that I wanted. And I remember saying, I wish I have what you have got. And basically he said, I've just got the love of the Lord in my life. And I thought, I need that. I need that. And it wasn't because it's just something else I wanted. 
but there was just something about this person and inner strength and inner peace and inner calmness. And I thought, I need that. I remember this person leading me to the Lord. That was over 30 years ago and something I've never looked back on. And then we read about Jesus again. The people came from miles to see Jesus. His disciples gave up their jobs and their family to follow him. He had something attractive about him. Now, I don't believe that Jesus was, in the natural, a good-looking man. I don't think he would have had an Instagram account or anything like that. But there was something about him that people just drew. And if he's got these gifts of the Spirit, which he surely will have, you can understand why. And I often think about doing the Lord's work. I see it as doing some kind of apprenticeship. First of all, we learn the basics. And then we listen and we practice and what we have been taught and what we have been shown. And then we start to think and develop. And then we can say to ourselves, we can do this. And what if I take this knowledge and apply it somewhere else? Well, David in the Bible is a great example of this because he fought the lion and he fought the bear and then he went on to fight Goliath. So he took what he knew, took what he practiced and then he applied it somewhere else. And we need to have the faith and knowledge and understanding. Just look in the mirror and now remember who you are. Remember that you have what you have been given. You're not a doormat to have people wipe their feet on you. You carry God's authority. You are a good creation. Not something to boast or be big-headed about. But you are there to spread the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. For what we all have is the same as what Christ has. We have this through Christ himself, whose image we are made in. So my challenge to you and to myself is for each and every one of us to do our best to be Christ-like. For to know him is to know God. Reflect God's love wherever you go and lead others to the gift of salvation through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So until next time, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Like and comment. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you will be notified as future videos are published. May God go with you now and always.